No doubt shell sites are already set on its next oil field conquest. Irrespective of who lives where or their history with that land. And down where the Niger River bends. A Goni people, they make their stand. The Shell Oil Company has other plans. They've no right to walk this earth when oil's buried deep beneath that dirt. Can sorrow cry, let freedom reign. White men came, took everything. Today is the 20th anniversary of the execution of Ken Sarawiva, the Agoni 9. While Shell stood idly by and then it happened, and it is very fitting that we're here to hold Shell to account for their, at very least, inaction to prevent that from happening. Ken Sarawiwa and the other eight Ogoni people were wrongfully executed back in Nigeria, in Ogoni land, for fighting for their right and what belongs to them, taken away by the multinational company known as Shell. And it's one of the reasons why we are doing this tonight, so that voices can be heard and people can be empowered and supported to get justice for what they are looking for back in Ogoni land. The agony of trees dying in ancestral farmlands Streams polluted, weeping filth into murky rivers. It is the poisoned air coursing the luckless lungs of dying children. Obviously there was a great human rights violation and uh, tragedy in his death and the oppression visited upon the Yoni people in the name of big oil. And 20 years on, it resonates very clearly still now that we face the fight to keep fossil fuels in the ground for the purposes of climate change. So for Friends of the Earth, obviously, we try to bring together that social dimension and the environmental dimension. It's fantastic to see the communities across Ireland resisting fracking in the way that the Agoni resisted the Shell. We think that we can take a lot of inspiration from the Agoni, from their struggle, and from our solidarity with them as we now face into the job of taking on the name of Big Oil. Shell paid $16 million to avoid being charged for complicity in the execution of the Agoni 9 in Kensar Wheel in New York in April 2009. It's just absolutely unacceptable that one of the biggest corporations on earth can buy impunity. I've been to that region, Goni Land, and if you go there, you will cry for the people, for the local people there, because they are basically farmers and fishermen, and that is all they depend on because they don't have good education, they don't have no schools, no hospitals. So what they depend on is the farming and fishing, which the oil spillage has totally grounded, and it's like they are living for nothing. Down in the Congo where free men roam. The Obama administration abandoned the big pipeline from Canadian tar sands, the dirtiest form of fossil fuels, down to refine it in the US because of three, five years of grassroots activism across the US, bringing together ranchers and farmers and environmentalists, so those affected socially and those affected environmentally. And we need to see more and more of that as we try to contain climate change into the future. Listen to their spirits cry, freedom comes true genocide. Home of the brave, land of the free, until white men came, took everything. Shell is a company that pantomimes concern and compassion for human beings when its only true concern is for where money can be found. No doubt Shell's sights are already set on its next oil field conquest, irrespective of who lives there or their history with the land. When my brother Ken was executed, his last words were, Lord, take my soul, but the struggle continues. I hope Ken is watching and seeing that yes it does. From Ogoniland to the Arctic to the Philippines to Eris in County Mayo and beyond, people are rising up to say, Shell, no. They are standing strong against a corporation and an entire industry that will mortgage our future for quick profits. I can think of no better way to honour my brother Ken. <laughs>